Happy Little Games. When something comes along that proves to be utterly successful, it doesn't take long for clones and knockoffs to start crawling out of the woodwork. Growing up as a hick among the sticks, knockoffs were a common thing in the Patman QC household. If I was feeling a bit peckish, I would just head for the cupboard and grab a can of prongles, a cat cot, and possibly some cream betweens and wash it all down with a glass of Dr. Bob. And rest assured, you could find knockoffs in video games as well. Companies have been borrowing each other's concepts for <clears throat> inspiration almost as long as video games have been in existence. And today, we are going to talk about a rather successful one. These knockoffs were inspired not only by a certain sewer-dwelling, martial arts-practicing, pizza-eating group of amphibians, but also a couple of bad-to-the-bone twins who were out to rescue Marion. Yes, today we are talking about those totally rad anthropomorphic toads known as battle toads. This short-lived but much-beloved franchise spawned everything from video games to cartoons to action figures and everything in between was known for its cool-as-cucumbers characters and also its brutal difficulty. What video game inspired the play mechanics of this game? Why was this game changed for the Japanese Famicom release? Let's find out as we delve into the history of Battletoads. When discussing video game companies that have done truly great things, then Rare would be right at the top. The company was started by Tim and Chris Stamper in 1985 and was then known as Ultimate Play the Game. The company had a generous budget from Nintendo, and during this time, they would create memorable titles such as RC Pro-Am, the mind-blowing Donkey Kong Country, the epic GoldenEye 007, Killer Instinct, and more. In 1990, Tim Stamper had gone to the Consumer Electronics Show in the U.S., and saw firsthand of how insanely popular the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise was. Sideways scrolling arcade style games or belt scrollers were very popular in the late 1980s and Rare had previous experience with that genre. Mr. Stamper gave the okay of producing one of these titles in a beat-em-up vein but needed some original characters. Nintendo was very strict in regards to violence, so Rare decided to produce a family-friendly type of game. The higher-ups at Rare were big fans of the game Double Dragon, but wanted to take the concept and expand upon it. They ended up taking a more cartoon-like approach, which really helped the game stand out. The character designs were done mostly by Kevin Bayless, who had been with the company since 1987. The only direction he was given was that it was going to be a frog or toad based game with fighting. According to Mr. Bayless, When I was a kid, I was heavily into natural history and the wildlife pond in my back garden. It was like a world of tiny monsters with my favorites being frogs, toads, and newts because they were like miniature versions of 50s B-movie dinosaurs. Mr. Bayless was also a huge fan of Bruce Lee. The original concept for the Toads with Attitudes was a mixture of his two interests, in which he quickly scribbled a picture of three frogs on a lily pad holding nunchucks and swords with the title The Amphibians. Mr. Stamper liked the idea but hated the name, so they changed it to Battle Toads and veered away from the martial arts take and decided to make them more futuristic and fantastical. These character designs were squeezed down into sprites by Mr. Stamper, who, according to Mr. Bayless, had it down to an art form. He could make the absolute most out of the memory available. 
programmer Mark Betteridge was put in charge of all the coding duties and worked closely with Mr. Stamper. Kevin had loved playing the PC Engine game China Warrior, which was a scrolling beat-em-up that featured a large Bruce Lee knockoff. Occasionally, the character's hands would grow, creating a powered-up punch. He decided to do something like this with the Battletoads and gave them giant axes, drills, and all kinds of objects. This really helped the Toads stand out and gave each one a different identity. The characters of the Battletoads themselves were conceived in order to produce merchandise on a mass scale similar to the 1989 summer blockbuster Batman. As I mentioned, the developers were big fans of Double Dragon, especially the simultaneous two-player mode which was sadly lacking in the NES version. When it came time to design the gameplay elements, the simultaneous two-player mode was a must, which was actually developed before any other story elements. They felt they had to get the gameplay just right first and foremost before doing anything else. They wanted to create a contrast to the popular Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and other beat-em-ups of the era. They accomplished this by adding extra mechanics in the game such as racing stages and climbing levels. According to Mr. Bayless, Tim was always looking at ways to create different styled levels. I'd go into his office and see a huge piece of paper on his drawing board with the sections of walls drawn out set to move in parallax to create Wookie Hole. The levels were also designed by Mr. Betteridge which would explain the nightmarish difficulty. Kevin has stated that a lot of work went into making it seriously hard and precise. Some levels were so difficult that Kevin could hear Mark screaming when testing out the levels, complaining that even though he designed them, he couldn't get past them. They all felt that the game, while extremely difficult, could be completed with practice. The game uses a number of introductory and cutscenes to tell the tale and explain exactly what's going on. The developers wanted to give characters names that would appeal to 13-year-old boys everywhere, which was Zitz, Pimple, and Rash. We have very distinct pieces of music courtesy of Dave Wise, who also provided the fantastic soundtrack for Donkey Kong Country. There are also a wide variety of enemies, levels, and a pretty cool story to boot. To help promote the product, in Nintendo Power Magazine issue 25, there is a 35-page spread on our favorite Fantastical Toads. Battletoads was released for the NES in 1991. As the story goes, Pipple and his main squeeze Princess Angelica are having a nice space cruise when suddenly they are kidnapped by the bodacious Dark Queen and her minions. Back on the Battletoads base, which is the spaceship Vulture, your guy in the chair, Professor T-Bird, Notifies Zitz and Rash that their brother-in-arms, Pimple and Princess Angelica, have been kidnapped. Before they can reach the spaceship doors, a message comes across from the Dark Queen taunting our amphibian friends. It's up to you and possibly a friend to step up and take down the Dark Queen and rescue your friends. This game is a one or two player platform beat-em-up which sees you take control of Rash and Zist as you have to deal with a number of wacky characters and sometimes end of level bosses. There are 12 levels in total with a number of varying gameplay styles. The gameplay is considered to be a mixture of side-scrolling beat-em-ups and fast-paced vehicle stages. As noted, one of the things that helped set the Toads apart from other generic beat-em-ups were their individual personalities. Rash is clearly the coolest Toad in the room because he is the only one with sunglasses. Then we have Zitz and finally Pimple. Player 1 is always Rash, Player 2 is always Zitz, and Pimple is unplayable. He would get his time to shine in later releases, but more on that later. The controls are fairly simple with the A button performing jumps and the B button is used for attacking, grabbing flies, and using weapons. You tap twice on the controller to run, and then while running you can perform a headbutt. You can also pick up your opponents and throw them for maximum damage. 
the actual in-game sprites are oozing with personality as well. The characters' jaws will drop when they see something quite shocking on the screen and their eyes will blink ever so slightly. It's nothing compared to what we have today, but 32 years ago it was a welcome addition and something you didn't see very often. It was these little nuances that helped bring our froggy friends to life. Something else that makes these characters unique is the smash hit. You accomplish this by punching the enemies to weaken them and to finish them off, you use a smash hit which usually involves comical transformations to your character. A giant boot or a giant fist is what's for dinner. Littered throughout certain levels are flies which you can snag with your tongue giving you an HP boost. You are going to need each and every one of these flies because this game is notoriously difficult. Each game gives you three lives with each one giving you six HP for your character. You only get three continues and then it's game over. There is no save file or password to help you out. There are one-ups and a few warp zones on the various levels but nowhere near enough in my opinion. Upon starting up this game, you will die and you will die a lot. Memorization and patterns are the key to your success just like any old school game back in the day. I've been playing video games for over 40 years and have beat a large number of them, but I could never get past level 4 of this game when it was released back in 1991. The only way I could complete this game for this video was through cheats. The gameplay is very unique, offering up different types of play mechanics. These are backed up with some truly spectacular graphics and special effects. Loads of parallax scrolling, both horizontal and vertical, really makes the game come alive and introduces a lot of depth to the levels. Some of the pseudo-rotation and 3D effects are fantastic and are just the icing on the cake. To be fair, there is some flicker going on, but with a game of this magnitude pushing the NES as far as it can go, it's to be expected. The enemies are also varied with over 20 different types you have to deal with. The game does offer simultaneous two-player action, but there is no friendly fire, meaning you can damage your partner. Also, if one player has to continue, then both players have to restart the whole level. The levels you will encounter are Ragnarok's Canyon, Wookie Hole. Turbo Total. Arctic Caverns. City. Carnos Lair. Volkmeyer's Inferno. Intruder Excluder.
TerraTubes. Rat Race. Winger Winger and the revolution. Some of the bosses you fight are Boss Walker, Big Blag, Robo Manus. General Slaughter, Buzzball, and finally the Dark Queen. If you are able to overcome the insurmountable odds, you defeat the Dark Queen and rescue Princess Angelique and Pimple. A nice ending sequence is shown where the Dark Queen lives to fight another day. and I reviewed Ultra Enviro Man. Whack to the curve. It has got to go. <laughs> so today, we're gonna take a look at Battletoads. Rocky! That it is, I mean, they got Psycho Pigs and Turbo Thwacking. And with kick fighting, surfing, babe shaving, how can you go wrong? Your kids are freak for Battletoads and these other games from Trade West. Nintendo Entertainment or Game Boy Systems Required. This game was both a critical and commercial success when it was released back in 1991. When it was released for the Famicom, a number of changes were made. For starters, the difficulty was made a bit easier as well as all of the vehicle levels having been slowed down just a bit. Certain enemies and placements have been changed and you also start with 5 lives instead of 3. Most enemies and bosses have half the usual hit points. The game was ported to a number of systems which I will cover later in the video. A lot of the merchandise that the team had envisioned had come to pass including t-shirts, posters, action figures, as well as a Battletoads comic that was written by rare employee Guy Miller. This appeared in issue 25 of Nintendo Power and it's considered the canon backstory of the series and really helps flesh out the characters and their origins. There was even a Battletoads handheld LCD game. Just to show how similar the Battletoads are with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, 
check out these figures side by side. A Saturday morning pilot was commissioned for a Battletoads cartoon, but it was not picked up. It's available to watch online, and honestly, I thought it was pretty entertaining. The original plan was to do a straight NES port to the Game Boy, but they had different ideas during development. They knew the work had to be done from scratch, so with a little bit of extra design and some new artwork, they created a title that was different enough that perhaps fans of the NES original would purchase this one as well. The game turned out rather well with the first stage being similar to the NES version. There's lots of new enemies to dish out the herd on with some new combat techniques as well. After the first stage, a number of new additions are introduced to the gameplay such as aerial combat which sees your toad jump onto a flying vehicle shooting all the enemies. The vehicle stages place a stronger emphasis on memorization and speed. There are 8 levels in total and except for stage 5 you face a boss at the end of each one. It's a fun little title and it was pretty cool playing Battletoads on the go back in the day. In 1993, the Toads made their triumphant Super Nintendo debut with Battletoads and Battle Maniacs. When the original title was released, some critics felt that the colors were too bland and the sprites were too small. That's not the case here. Upon starting up, you get a lengthy intro sequence and it's off to the races. There are loads upon loads of parallax scrolling and some nice background animation and terraforming. The bosses are large and detailed, but like with any other game in the series, once you learn the patterns, they are not very difficult. The original NES title clocked in at just over an hour, yet this one can be completed in around 35-45 minutes. This is sort of a remake of the original, but there's a lot of new content as well. The scaling, rotation, and in particular, the reflections on level 4 are very slick, no pun intended. While there are only six levels, the size and length have been increased to help compensate. As with previous Battletoads games, a lot of the difficulty of this title comes from the various vehicle levels which require pretty darn good memorization. Also, for the first time the Smash hits vary in appearance with each Toad. For example, instead of a big boot or a big fist, Pimple will transform into a blunt object to reflect his brute strength, whereas Rash has more flamboyant transformations because he is a show-off. The arcade game would later expand upon this concept. To help with the difficulty, there is a secret code that gives you 5 lives and 5 continues. There are also two separate two-player modes. The first one in which the Battletoads can hurt each other, and the other one where they are immune to their partner's attacks. This game also features a couple of bonus rounds, but any game that features bowling pins in a minigame always gets an extra thumbs up from me. This version was also ported, rather unsuccessfully, to the Master System. In a rather peculiar move, 1993 saw the release of Battletoads and Double Dragon the Ultimate Team. Although Double Dragon was initially developed by Technos, they had no involvement in this title. This probably came about due to both IPs being licensed to Trade West. To take down our amphibian heroes, the Dark Queen has teamed up with the Shadow Boss, which means you will have to deal with the Queen and her minions such as General Slaughter, but also the Shadow Boss's minions such as a Bobo. This is the first game in the series where all three Battletoads are playable as well as Billy and Jimmy Lee from the Double Dragon series. Each character has slight differences in performance such as the Toads being more powerful than Billy and Jimmy Lee. However, 
The twins use dragon techniques that react better but are not quite as damaging. The game is spread out over seven levels with a boss at the end of each one and there are some classic toad action. For example, one of the levels features a turbo tunnel like hallway and the other is a space shoot 'em up similar to the classic game Asteroids. The game was converted to a number of different systems with the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis versions having larger sprites and better colors. The music has also been upgraded and sounds great. The Super Nintendo version even features a move where you can throw the enemy into the screen just like in Turtles in Time. In 1994, Rare teamed up with Electronic Arts to give the Battletoads their time to shine in arcades all over the world. At least that was the plan. Simply titled Battletoads, this is a three-player simultaneous straight-up brawler and honestly, it gives the gameplay lots of graphic violence and insane difficulty. The original plan was to do a one-on-one -on -one fighter, but Mr. Stamper wanted a little more variety to keep it in line with the NES game. They decided to focus more on the brawling aspects and added a couple of vehicle stages, but for the most part, it's an intense ride and it's a lot of fun to play. Each toad has their own unique animation and of course, different attributes. They wanted to appeal to an older audience so they gave the Toads a harder edge to compete with the other violent games in the arcades at the time. The graphics are absolutely fantastic with giant sprites and excellent details. Each Toad also has unique smash hits which built upon the foundation introduced in Battle Maniacs. As I mentioned, this game has a lot of gratuitous violence such as visible blood splatters and certain enemies can even be decapitated. As you lay the smack down on the various bosses, they get bruised and bloodied as the battle commences. The toads are so outrageous that in this game, certain characters can even grab other enemies' junk and proceed to give it the old ball bag bopping. The game was even going to have the Toads cursing, which can be heard if you go on the Cutting Room Floor website. There are also a number of sprites and characters that didn't make it into the actual game. There are six levels in total with a boss at the end of each one. The game was a commercial flop due to low arcade sales which saw the planned release of the Super Nintendo port cancelled. There is no way I can do this game justice in this short amount of time. So perhaps I'll do a standalone video in the future. It is available for play in the Rare Replay compilation. Right. In 2013, as part of Season 3 of Killer Instinct, Rash would make his debut. The terrific trio also make an appearance as a bonus fight in the game Shovel Knight. To celebrate Rare's 30th anniversary, Rare Replay was released in 2015. This is a compilation that includes 30 games from the company's back catalog. This includes titles going all the way back to the Zenex Spectrum, NES, Nintendo 64, and Xbox. This included the original Battletoads as well as Battletoads Arcade, which was the only time this game has ever appeared on a home console. This impressive disc features a number of interviews with the developers going into the history of how these games were made. As far as the games go, they feature things such as save states, rewind, and unlimited lives. In 2020, a brand new game in the franchise was released. It was the first new entry in 26 years following Battletoads Arcade. This is a three-player simultaneous beat-em-up with vehicle levels inserted throughout. The first thing you notice upon starting up the game is the hand-drawn cell-shaded animation which makes it feel like you are controlling an actual cartoon character. 
Similar to previous efforts, each toad has their own strengths and weaknesses, but you can also switch between them during levels. The combos are insane with hard-hitting morph attacks. The vehicle levels are also back, as well as various puzzle challenges littered throughout. The graphics are absolutely fantastic, and if you had a soft spot for the game Dragon's Lair like I always did, then it's quite the rush actually controlling a living and breathing cartoon. The story unfolds through a number of beautiful cutscenes which makes the game come alive. At the end of each level, your stats are shown letting you know just how well you did. The game has over 20 levels and thankfully it's not quite as difficult as its previous iterations. There are selectable difficulties as well. This game features couch co-op as well as Xbox Live Play. This is another fantastic version of the Battletoads and you should definitely check it out if you haven't already. A Battletoads game was in development for the Game Boy Advance, but was cancelled. The game was only in development for a few weeks, but it used pre-rendered sprites similar to Donkey Kong Country. Another cancelled title was Super Battletoads for the original Game Boy, which was a spin-off of the arcade game. The title was actually completed and discovered on a floppy disk about 10 years ago. As I mentioned, there were a few conversions of the original title released in the early 1990s. Of the original console release, the Sega Genesis version is the most faithful to the Toad's original adventure. Thanks to the superior hardware, everything looks better with excellent details and colors that really pop off the screen. The luscious green grass and the smooth parallax scrolling look great while the characters themselves are well defined. The silky smooth frame rate and playability are also present along with some improved music and sound effects. The difficulty has been toned down plus you also start with 5 lives. With that being said, it's still a pretty hard game. Arc System Works, who was in charge of the fantastic Sega Genesis version, also produced a port for the Game Gear. While the game looks really good with some nice animation, the levels themselves are a lot shorter and are a bit different than the NES version. There are also only 9 stages in total. The stages are given a different layout for this version, so there are new things to look for and obstacles to overcome. The difficulty has also been adjusted, making the game easier overall. What really hurts this title is the playability. The sprites are zoomed in to compensate for the small screen size and the jumping wasn't tweaked to accommodate this. This means every jump has to be pixel perfect. Also, the collision detection is not very good which kills an otherwise fantastic product. It's still fun to play, but it would have been oh so much better with just a few little tweaks here and there. Battletoads in Ragnarok's World was also released for the original Game Boy but this time it's a pretty accurate rendition of the NES original capturing the looks and sounds almost perfectly. Some of the levels have been cut entirely and the snake pit has an entirely different layout. There are little changes throughout such as no flies to eat and you can't ride dragons. Similar to the Game Gear version, the sprites are zoomed in giving you a claustrophobic feel.
A version was also released for the Amiga, and for the first time ever, it featured a fully animated intro sequence. It's pretty cool to see, but the rest of the game is a bit of a letdown. While everything is fairly detailed with a bit of color splashed here and there, the sprites are a bit smaller. The animation on the sprites are also choppy, making for a not very fun gameplay experience. The hit detection is way off and the controls are a bit stiff. There is also only one fire button to use, so sacrifices to the nice, tight gameplay had to be made. Something else that hurts it is the sound. While the quality is excellent, making use of the Amiga's fantastic sound capabilities, unfortunately, you have to choose between music or sound effects. As far as the stages go, Turbo Tunnel and Surf City were replaced with two Amiga exclusive levels. You get pot holing and backpacking, which sees your toad on a mini jet. There is also a high score table, but in this version, you also don't get any continues. An Amiga CD32 version was released, but honestly, I couldn't tell any difference between the two aside from the loading times. And there you have it, my friends, the history of the utterly fantastic Battletoads. This game was fondly remembered for its innovative gameplay and Smash Mouth style, but not so fondly remembered for its difficulty. The game definitely takes practice, but if you put in the time, you will be pleasantly rewarded. If you've never had the chance to eat some flies all while dying a few hundred times, be sure and give this game a shot. You'll be glad you did. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. If you would like to contribute but not sign up for my Patreon, you can always click the donate button up above. Thanks everyone for watching.